Hi guys. <laughs> My name is Sharifa Murdoch, uh, co-owner of Liberty Fairs, Capsule and Cabana, trade shows out in New York, Miami, and Las Vegas. Also owner of Envision Fest in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, today you guys are in for Woo! a treat. <laughs> <laughs> today you guys are in for a treat. You have the industry's top leaders here, and they're going to talk about the thing I think that everybody wants to know about, collaborations. Uh, so I'm going to start with introducing everyone by name, and then I want you guys to tell everyone what you guys do. Okay? Jeff? Jeff Staple. Hey, what's up? I'm Jeff Staple. I'm the founder and creative director of Staple Design. Uh, we're a streetwear brand, a creative agency. We've dabbled in retail, a couple footwear projects as well, and I'm happy to be here. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Sharifa. <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> um, what can I say? Like, queen of these type of trade shows, right? <laughs> OG streetwear. Yes. YG, the future streetwear in yes, the East. Yes. And I'm just, oh. No. Right? <laughs> no. But uh, my name's Jonathan, but the brand that I represent is Triple OG. Exactly. Levi's. All right. It's a classic. Can we give it up for Levi's, though? Seriously. <laughs> okay. Benjamin. So actually, I want to start with something, a little story, because yes. I was 19 years old, yeah. uh, actually in a fair mm -hmm. in Berlin, and we just found out this just now. Yeah. Uh, actually, your partner. Yeah, my he, business partner. I was 19 year old doing like a T-shirt collection. Yeah. I was in bread and butter, mm -hmm. and uh, Sam Ben Abrams came in and bought my collection. I didn't know like what's wholesale markup and all of that, and he looked at me like. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna come again at night and place an order. <laughs> and here I am now, you know, after 11 years. So, That's crazy. Yeah. So, so I'm the founder and creative director of Le Benjamin. Mm -hmm. And basically um, what we do is create stories. Uh, we represent the East with a global vision. I was born and raised in Germany, Switzerland, and, and now living in Turkey. So. What we do is represent the East in storytelling, in our products, and we all have retails in Istanbul. We also have foot, footwear business, mm -hmm. and um, we do lots of collabs, which we will speak about. Yeah. Pleasure meeting you guys all. Uh, thank you, guys. All right, so we're going to start. You ready? I need to get this audience live. Come on, are we ready? All right, all right. Okay, so anyone can answer these questions as well. Walk us through the creative process of a brand collaboration. How does the brand get into contact with each of the collaborators that you want to collaborate with? Who's <laughs> on first? Go ahead. Uh, I go first? Yeah, you go. Yeah, you yeah, go. Okay. okay. So um, it's, it's both ways. Sometimes a brand would approach you. Okay. And they would have a campaign or a concept and they would want you to do something. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, you can come up with a great idea and you can convince the brand to create something. I've done both ways, mm -hmm. but most of the times, especially lately now, brands approach me. What I try to do most is, does this brand really reflect to who I am? Okay. You know, like, do I use it on my daily life? Mm -hmm. I feel like, especially now where we are in a world where lots of collabs are happening, yeah. it's really important that it's authentic because marketing doesn't work anymore because we all know how to market stuff. Yeah. It's more about real stories and real brands meeting it's real. Okay, yeah. got it. Do you guys have the same ethos? Like, how do you guys feel about the collaborations? How do you, Jeff? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think in many ways it's sort of like akin to getting married and dating. It's, <laughs> it's, um, it's like, how do you get married? Like, you can't just dial up a collaboration, sort of. And I think a lot of people have the impression, because it, you know, on social media it looks so easy, because you just see, like, we've collaborated, here's the final post. They don't see the... 18 months that it took to yeah. like make that happen so i agree with benjamin like it's it's really organic sometimes it's us reaching out with an idea um sometimes it's a company reaching out i think more often than not it is a company reaching out and i for us and i would assume for you guys too it's because we have like an existing let's call it an inline business mm -hmm. like we have a business that's not based on collaboration and so collaboration is kind of like a cherry on the top of our like main business you know yeah. but um there's other brands that are like sort of um much more heavily pinned on collaboration where every year they're probably thinking of like who do we collaborate or every month now yeah. maybe who do we collaborate with it's kind of crazy there's like so that. many now yeah i mean i definitely understand and i believe that you are right. It's an added value for your business, which yeah. I think is very interesting. 
Um, the question is, though, when you go into these collaborations, are you going into it saying, I want them to make 500? What, what, what is the thought process? Is it... If a collaboration takes two years <laughs> to, to manifest, the first six months is like coffees and meals. Okay. Isn't it? It's really? like it's just making sure that we gel and that we make sense to, to work with each other. And then it's like, and at the, and you know this as well. At the end of the day, it's not two brands collaborating. It's actually people collaborating, mm -hmm. right? So like, if I'm working with these three guys at this mega million, multi billion dollar corporation, and those three people leave, guess what? I'm not collaborating with that company anymore. More, you know, like it. it comes down to personal relationships. So you get to know them. You sort of get to know what they are are trying to get. They understand what I'm trying to get, and then we begin literally like six months in. Okay. What should we do? Yeah. What, what, what should it look like? Meaning, like, should it be one T-shirt, 20 T-shirts, five sneakers? Should it be a, a photo campaign? Like, that's it takes that long. Got it. I think, like, it's uh, matchmaking, like you said, you know. I feel like it's really important for both parties to... The brands may fit to each other, but you have people also behind it, right? Yep. So even the people you work with, I feel like it's very important as well. Yep. I mean, it's got, it's got to be real. You nailed it in your first sentence, Benjamin. It, it was authentic, right? It's yes. got to feel real. You, you know, what we look for is mutual affection and mutual admiration. You've got to be like real fans of each other. It's got to be fans making things for fans, right? Yeah. Because it, you can smell it and you can tell if you, if you, if you, you've got to put love in to get love out, okay. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it, you can really feel and taste it if it if it doesn't happen that mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. but if you put that in, then you you will get something special out out of the end. And I, I you know I I agree. It it is like marriage, and you know you got to pick pick your partners. Yeah, I believe I'm a firm believer in fashion. People do business with the people they want to do business with, and that's it, right? Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, for you have you represent an amazing heritage brand, yeah. right? When you started doing collaborations. What was was it a hard transition? Was it we need to pick a particular person because it has to represent our brand, or was it the same relationship values? I think certainly, you know, when my, me and my team started working on collaborations, um, I think we we were literally doing it as fans, you know, okay. and there were there were no co like commercial expectations. I think some of the commercial success has taken us and the brand by surprise, you know, like like working with Jordan and when the cops shut down the stores in, in like New York and San Francisco and London, you know, we were the, we were the biggest one shot. We, we didn't expect anything like that. We just wanted to do it because, you know, our, our peeps in Jordan, you know, were d doing a great job and we got a chance to work on the Jordan 4, you know? So yeah. it, that, that's the thing, right? You, you, you try and make it special. You try to make something that's going to make your heart race. Yeah. And if you do that, then the financials will take care of themselves. Yeah, understood. You guys? All right. How are the responsibilities of production and distribution like settled upon? Like, who who does it? Is it the person that came to the idea of the collaboration, or is it just settled upon as you guys come up? It's again. I feel it's uh, depends on the brand you work with. Got it. Sometimes the brand wants to maintain their product quality and uh, uh, maintain the same kind of. Um, product mm -hmm. in terms of quality so they they'll tell you it's gonna be produced there but sometimes you could also come up and say you know what I'm more experienced in this maybe it's more um, something that you even though you're a smaller brand or a smaller artist mm -hmm. you're more experienced in that end and a, a, a big brand trusts you mm -hmm. to create it internally in your own atelier or in your own production facilities yeah so I feel like again uh, it's like both ways, it depends. Jeff, well, how do you handle the most, most part? Yeah, I mean, it really comes down to like the expertise, you know, like if it's, um, it's like a yin yang. Yeah. So like yeah. if one complements the other, you just sort of say which one's gonna be better at this. Um, mm -hmm. That In terms of distribution, it's the same thing. So <clears throat> sometimes you do projects um, for the halo effect and you wanna keep it very quick and limited and um, direct. And so you just want it to sort of be in and out. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you want to do projects, and I'm talking about from the creator side, like sometimes you actually want to do projects that have scale. And you don't want to do something that is like 50 pieces and only one shop in Tokyo gets it. Yeah. Like, sometimes I do projects and I'm like, no, I want a kid who lives in 
Memphis, Tennessee to be able to get this stuff yeah. too, you know? So that, and that starts with the conversation of what it is that you're making. That determines like how wide the distribution is. Um, and then after you determine how wide you want it to be, then it's about um, who actually handles the selling of it. And again, this is always, it's a collaboration, right? So it's a two-way conversation. I could want, I could say like, hey, I want to make 50,000 of these. And he could be like, I want to make five. So now we have to like come, I mean five, literally five. Five? You know, yeah, five pieces. Someone will come to you and ask you to do five. Oh yeah, I've done stuff where I've made, I recently did an inset holder and we made 30 pieces. Like, what? yeah, it's just, you know, so like, the other thing is you have to make sure that you are in alignment with the partner that you're working on. And again, going back to the dating analogy, you got to come to that compromise, you know? Got it. How attached are you guys to your collaborations? <laughs> like marriage. Like marriage? Yeah, yeah super attached. You know, and, and, and like Jeff said, all, all that stuff about who does what. I think, first of all, you play to your strengths, right? Levi's knows denim, so we're not, you know, our partners are not expected to produce the jeans themselves. That's what they come for, that kind of authenticity and, uh, you know, and, and, and that expertise. And for like distro, I, we're always like, what, what do you guys want to do, you know? So it's totally like that. Got it. Um, when, like, according, like, because we have the web now, I mean, I come from like old school where it was no web, we just went in stores and bought things. How hard is it to do? those collaborations with overseas people. So like we're in New York, how hard is it to do in Japan? Is there a bunch of legal paperwork that you have to go through? Is it a headache? And do, do it deter you from going into the process? Uh, there are legal headaches. Uh, <laughs> luckily for a nice company like Levi's, there's a team that, yeah. you know, a legal team that can work their way through that. I want to hear. But you've got to be persistent, right? You've yeah. got to really want to do it. And I think, you know, with collaborations, because they're passion projects, it's, it's that persistence that gets you through. Then there are lots of, I, I would say less legal, but lots of like logistical headaches to get through, you know, like imports and getting things on time and making sure everything drops at the same time, yeah. all those kind of things. But because it's something you do because you, you love it and you want to do it and you want, you want the audience, your, 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 your fans to, mm -hmm. to get, have that moment, right? And have those, those special moments, then you just get through it. Yeah, I think it's, <clears throat> it's having the intention of like saying, we want this to be a global thing yeah. or not a global or a regional thing. And then if your intention is good, then it's just working out the logistics of how to make that happen, whether it's legal or shipping or trademarks or something like that, you know? It's just part of the fun. Like, yeah. working yeah. like, okay, we're going to do this collaboration in Japan and we're just doing one with Bape right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and there are, like, legal, like, loopholes to jump through. That's just part of the fun. Yeah. I yeah. just want to add another angle to your question, if I may. Um, I feel like being from Istanbul, it's mm -hmm. also really difficult, like, in Turkey to be able to talk to the global teams Got it. so I had a struggle with like oh I'm always constantly working with regional projects mm -hmm. so what I did from this region is I actually start going to Paris Fashion Week start going to Milan start yeah. going to New York LA to all these events and you start building these bridges I feel like uh, also from a commercial and um, like uh, working method it is more difficult mm -hmm. rather than being from New York or from London but I feel like platforms like these, like SoulDXP, are so important for us all Agreed. to meet. And I feel like the guys have been doing such a great job. I agree. Putting all this together. And um, I feel like we need to build more bridges. I agree. Yeah. You know? Because we talk about attachment, I want to bring up something. How do you guys feel about the resale of the product? I like, I mean, I'm attached to things that I work on. I will be, personally, I might get excited over it. Or do you, like, get devastate, <laughs> devastated over it? Like, how do you feel about it when you see it on a resale? <laughs> are you happy that the price went up? Are you? Yeah, I mean, you know? re resale is a, is a barometer and an indicator of the demand of the product that you did, right? Okay. But resale is kind of bullshit a little bit now because <laughs> you can control, like, the, the quantity of what you're releasing and uh -huh. you can control the demand, right? So if you just wanted to make, like I said, if you wanted to make five of something, yeah. it'll likely have a resale value. But... To me, like the most successful collaboration projects are the ones that sell out immediately, but you can't find them on any Anywhere. resale site because that means everyone who bought them is using the exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's really amazing. Uh, and I feel like that's the future too. I agree. I feel like um, 
you w- we will do less collaborations, but we will be more loyal uh-huh. because because the, there's so many of them right now. Yeah. I feel like it's gonna be more about authenticity and right. also brands right now are discussing how can we tackle the resale business, how can we include it in our own. So maybe we'll have like IDs and uh, we will be able to buy only the shoe and we won't be able to sell it. They're thinking about new ways because yeah. uh, the resale is also, as you said, Jeff, it's a it's a blessing and a curse. Exactly. I personally want all the stores to make the people wear them out the store. That way, they can't resell them as much as they want to. They, stores are stores have tried that. Yeah, like I like that model. Yeah, because it's like you want them to be a true fan of your brand, and that's how you're able to tell. Honestly, you know. Because you guys have done so many different collaborations, I'm going to ask each and every one of you, which brand, which collaboration was your favorite? That's like, 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 <laughs> what's your favorite? You about what's your favorite? Whatever. It is. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, who's your favorite child? Like, wh- give me, okay, give me your top two. I, I need time. I need time. All right. We're right, going to go right. back to no, Jeff. No, no, no. <laughs> Can you start? Uh, thanks, boys. Uh, hard. Yeah. And it's really hard. Uh, <laughs> I w- I, there was a moment, let me, let, like spring 2017, that season, which was obviously designed and developed like way ahead, right? Yep. Starting in, like, like Jeff says, like getting to know people in 2015. Spring 2017, right? Levi's uh, takes part in the Vetmont, a show that has like 18 different collaborations. Uh-huh. We are doing a collaboration with Off White. We are doing Gosha Rubczynski. <coughs> we have Supreme. I, I, I can't single out a one moment, but I, that is kind of like... Um, a perfect storm of like, whoa, all these collaborations, you know, and Levi's is fortunate to be a partner in all these collaborations that this, this change in culture and this yeah. movement change in culture, right, where, where fashion is really switching from what was perceived to be luxury to this new movement and a new belief and, and, and being part of that was a very special moment. Okay. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Actually, this is a funny story because, um, I mean, uh, I'm a big Michael Jordan fan. And, you know, being invited and uh, designing for Nike, mm-hmm. uh, that was the biggest moment for me because mm-hmm. I grew up um, watching him play and yeah. uh, seeing him jump, you know. And um, when Nike flew me into Portland for the okay. World Forward campaign and I saw that Nike campus, I was like, oh, wow, yeah. that's a moment. Yeah. And for me, designing a shoe inside Tinker Hatfield Studio, I mean, it still it still gives me goosebumps, and um, I would say that would, was, that was the, probably biggest the moment. biggest moment. I think for that me. Nike um, platform impresses everyone. I was a heel girl, and when I went, I was like, "What's the big deal?" And when I got there, it was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. I was like trying to buy everything that I saw in the store. So trust me, I get it. Yeah. Okay, Jeff. Let's hear. I mean, we did we did a Nike as well. <laughs> in 2005 <laughs> and it was it was a gift and a curse because it sort of like it was so early in the collaboration game um, but it set this bar that was like really sort of hard to overcome so I think after having that sort of DNA involvement in footwear what was really cool was doing other collaborations for instance like we inadvertently worked on a collaboration together on yeah. a on a Google Jacquard Levi's trucker jacket. Oh, wow. That was like the first, at the time, it was the first, f- like, sort of fiber optically enhanced denim jacket mm-hmm. that you could plug your smartphone into and you could control everything by swiping your sleeve. Oh. And I did the artwork on the back of it. We worked oh. on it in the Levi store. It was really awesome. Okay. Um, we also did a collaboration uh, that one of the ones that I'm most proud of is with Shake Shack, where the head of marketing for Shake Shack literally walked into Reed Space and was like, would you like to design your own burger and shake and make an apparel Stop. collection around it? And so to be able to like take what we've learned, but then like sort of elbow our way into like other venues is really cool. Like I'm wearing a pair of Cole Haan's right now. Cole Haan is not traditionally like a sneakerhead brand. It's more like of a work wear mm-hmm. in the in the sense of like actually doing business. So you know that is also another elbowing of like into another industry as well. You know, so it's just fun to see how far this culture has taken all of us. Got it. I personally liked your Timberland collab that you did recently. Oh, yeah. That was like a month ago. (laughs) Yeah. So Um, we touched upon this recently, a little while ago. How far do you think collaborations will die? Because we're... You do see an in it, we do see an oversaturation of collabs, and sometimes I personally look at it, and you can see the now you can see the unauthenticity about it. Like you can see certain collabs, and you're like, okay, 
you but know? The people know. Yeah. They know the good ones and the real ones and the authentic ones. Yeah. And they separate from, you know, everything that's just like bandwagon jumping. Mm -hmm. I don't, th I, I mean, ultimately, really ultimately, if we take collaborations and we extrude that thought process into the future, yeah. everyone's a collaborator, I right? Agree. You are yeah. all collaborators. Yes. We're all here. We're all going to collaborate. Yeah. And yeah. then that's what we're going to do in the future. Yeah. I mean, I think also the cream will rise to the top. Mm -hmm. There may be thousands of more collaborations that occur. But if you really think about it at the end of the year when you zoom out, every year is sort of the same number of collaborations that really hit, hit. hit deep, right? Yeah. And there's just more that people sort of forget about, you know? Um, so I think in the future, there could be tens of thousands of more, but they'll still be the same number that are amazing. I think it's more about choosing really the right partner, yeah. telling the, a real authentic story, and also less is more. You know, gotcha. you, 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 do, you also produce less. With, uh, sustainability is also a huge subject right now, and yes. I feel like designing something timeless mm -hmm. and that we can wear all our life long. And I think collabs is, is going back to crafts, you know? Like right now, me as a designer, what excites me the most is to find the real artisan craftsman and learn from him the heritage of how he came up with that craft. Yeah. You know, that's more exciting to me. Got it. And I feel like, like Jeff said, there's only few collabs that, that really like capture us. That's and I feel like less is more. That's how I want to like jump to that. Jonathan? Well, it, it fundamentally, right, people don't buy products. They buy a better version of themselves, you know? And that's, <laughs> well, no, really, right? Okay. You know, so a great collab, that's what it should make you feel, right? All those like fundamental human needs of being loved and a sense of belonging, right? And some peer recognition and uh, the human being's attraction to scarcity, all those things that make us human and the storytelling, right? That's what a good collab does. And that's what a good collab gives that feeling to a, a person, right? I, yeah. I'm you know, associate myself with the coolest pair of coal hands I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I feel better about myself, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's th things like that, you know, so that, if you, if you know that and get that right, how do we make something that makes you feel like a better version of yourself? Then that's always gonna that's always gonna work. Okay. I'm gonna take that one step further because I've been thinking about I've been on the same wavelength, and what you're what you're talking about is kind of like tribalism in a way. We're like having a particular thing, whether it's a collab or a piece of clothing, says that I'm down with this tribe, right? Like I'm I'm yeah. with the in, but. By, the, by nature of collaboration and hype, there's a limited amount of these things. And so there's a lot more people that have FOMO of not being in the tribe, right? So I've been sort of racking my brain about how do we eliminate the inherent shaming? At, oh, shaming might be too extreme of a word, but like the inherent sort of like I missed out and like I don't have that thing or that watch or that shoe. So hence, I'm not as cool as thou like that issue that is happening. I really don't like this uh, feeling that it gives yeah. to people. Yeah, but it, it's natural. It's a natural human thing to be like, everyone's hyped about this thing. They're seeing everyone. And I'm like, not oh, inclusive. I didn't. Uh, yeah, it's not inclusive, yeah. exactly. And I'm trying to figure out how to make collaboration partnerships happen, but also where it's completely inclusive and everyone can share in it, you know? I think it's more about the marketing plan when you do the collab. I think the problem with collabs is that it is exclu inclusive. In in oh my God. Sorry. Yeah, Exclu it's exclusive. It's exclusive, right? yes. And when kids see it on the gram, they're like, why didn't I get that? Why can't I be a part of it? But if the marketing strategy was to put it out there in a positive note, like yeah. the next one is coming out, blah, or like we all are one, or some sort of marketing strategy behind it. I just I, feel like. This, this is know. just for, for, I think the collaborations are just an example of creative people doing creative things mm -hmm. but what we want to do is release you know be able to facilitate creativity for everyone yeah so yeah you didn't get this collab but it's inside of you the collab just come in come right in. and get it done we'll yeah. do it together walk in talk to a t tailor at a levi store or whatever like yeah it's super super easy and yeah. create your own unique special moment that other kids are going to stop right. you in the street and go, you know, how Where'd do I you get, get one that? of those? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I like about the Levi's store in New York. It's like you can go in and pick your own button. You can pick your yeah. own right. trim. It's like 
it's an experience when you go in there. And yeah. I think yeah, that I that's call what it the makes Disney it. Disney experience. The Disney you know? experience. Yeah, that's how I always represent it. Like when you walk into a store and you see a 360 degree world. Yeah. And you lose yourself. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I, went, I went to the Times Square new location. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, there's a... I also think that that's how, you know, everyone has individuality, yeah. right? Because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, yes, we can have these exclusive pieces, but then everybody, those 50 people or those 100 people start looking the same. Yeah. So what you guys are doing, which we applaud you on, is like giving everyone their own identity and having them be able to express themselves whatever way they want. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, people have been doing that forever anyway, yes. right? They've yes. been doing the first it at one. home, you know. Yeah. We're <laughs> just copying what people do yeah. and like, you know, making it a little bit more widely available. Agreed. How do you guys, I mean, you touched upon it briefly. How do you guys feel about sustainability? Like we said, this is a big, big talk right now in fashion. Everyone's trying to be as sustainable as possible. It's really difficult. How do you think this plays into collaborations? It's tough because you just, you know, you want to get to a point where it's not about hoarding and collecting, but it's yeah. about minimizing what you own, mm-hmm. you know, but as, as companies of any scale, whether it's like a billion dollar or a thousand dollar, you need to make product in order to sustain. But if you're educating people along the way and telling them like, what is the right way of the process of how we're doing things, mm-hmm. that could actually make like a big shift in the future of how it's done. Whereas if everyone just stopped making stuff and mm-hmm. consuming, that is probably like the most right answer. And I love like Patagonia's, you know, Yvonne Chouinard, he's just like, please stop buying Patagonia. That's like the, that's like the best way to save the planet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, w- what I would like to add is um, we're the world's biggest polluter. Mm-hmm. We um, probably only 1% gets recycled. Yeah. And I feel like the approach needs to change. It needs to be a circular approach. Mm-hmm. So in the future, what I believe is we're going to have bins in the stores. Mm-hmm. And you'll be able to bring your product back. Yeah. And then it's going to get recycled. We already do. They already, yeah. <laughs> we already yeah. do. You, you're doing it. You guys yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sustainability, right? The ch- this is the challenge of our generation. You know, they're... they're we could say don't buy anything anymore, but that would deny us being what fundamentally makes us human, right? Yeah. Fashion, right? You can go into an archaeological dig, mm-hmm. a, a, a turkey, you know, cradle of civilization, right? And you'll find jewelry and sculpture and art that, pr- that precedes written language and pre- precedes agriculture. You know, it's part of what makes us human. So we cannot stop that and we shouldn't stop that because that's we are creative creatures. What we can do is make that better. Right. So yeah. some things we can do is we can we can make things that last a long time that can get upcycled, like mm-hmm. a pair of vintage Levi's. Right. Yeah. Go into any vintage store. You, you're picking up Levi's that have not only not been single use. Right. Mm-hmm. They're multiple generational. use. Yes. Right. That is super sustainable. Other things you can do in collaborations. Our first collaboration with Vetmont Virgil Abloh was customizing vintage Levi's. We have one coming out with Tremaine Emery any minute now. Right. Okay. Uh, Denim Tears customizing vintage Levi's that's super sustainable and then if you're creating stuff from scratch make it long-lasting make it out of better materials you know uh, we have uh, well, actually we've we've been doing a collaboration with out and own uh, with hemp you know using hemp as a cotton substitute so we're gonna see more and more of those things and more and more of our partners mm-hmm. uh, actually demand that from us and come to us because they share that belief and they believe that Levi's has those values Got it. Love it. You have anything, Jeff? Oh, no. no. Okay. Um, when it comes to basically, when you think about these collaborations, normally people will go for the names that match or like the higher tiered names. Is there ever a time that you say, I want to go for an artist that's unknown or a music person that's unknown that has not launched it, that's not popular? Are you caring about this or? I do. I love doing those things. I love unearthing like the next diamond in the rough, you know? Um, I will say though the challenges at a corporation, yeah. and I say, comp- you know, corporation or company is that like <clears throat> everyone's intentions aren't the same, right? So right. when you start talking to salespeople and distributors and and marketers, like they want everything that they work on to be a home run, and so if you if me as the creative says I want to work with, you know, John Smith who's doing this like you know, finger painting in his basement, they're like, well, what's that going to mean for my sales quota? What's that going to mean for my marketing campaign? You know? So as a creative, you have to like, it's way harder to push down those doors to be like, I don't 
give a uh, like we yeah. are doing this collaboration. It's like you know? you're gambling for in their eyes, you know. Yeah. They don't get it sometimes, yep. but yeah. it's your creative process, and yes. it's your. And I feel like it's important to do what your heart says. Push it. Yeah. it. It's like picking stocks. You can buy, you know, Apple and Amazon, or you can pick the one that is going to go 10x, right? Yeah. And, and and that's the secret. Like, so many of the collaborations that we have done that like household names now, mm -hmm. like in 2015 when we wanted to work with uh, Virgil Abloh and Vetmont, right? I, I could see, we, I'd go into meetings and people would be Googling those names on the iPhone <laughs> underneath the table. In 2015, which is totally fair enough, yeah. right? But that's the future, like, you know, working with people like Xavier, Zulu, hey, shout out to Xavier, right? The, it's the, the youth is the future, so yes. you've got to do both. Yes. When you say the youth is the future, I'm a firm believer, and Jeff knows this, of uplifting the youth and the youth culture. Are you guys implementing this in the company? Are you guys looking towards the youth to tell you, listen, because I mean, after a while you get older, right? And you don't know everything that's out and you don't know who to collaborate at some point. Or do you have interns, do you have assistants that are like, you need to look at blah, yeah? I got that, it's totally the story. Virgil Abloh, Levi's works with Virgil Abloh. Ablo. We did like five or six projects together mm -hmm. because an intern stopped me in the canteen and said, you got to work with this guy called Virgil Abloh. Okay. Summer intern. I love that. We hired him. <laughs> Jeff, Shout out to Hector. You? Yeah, I'm the uh, I'm the oldest guy in the company, so <laughs> I want to keep it that way. I, I it's very necessary for me to keep that youth energy around me. I, I need to learn all the memes and all the lingo and all yes, the terminology. Yes. Yeah. I feel so old at the at the office. I'm like always like yeah. last week I was like Okay, not last week, last month. I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> I was like, what does it mean when the emoji says, like, no, and then a hat? I need to, like, get, under, like no cap. I just learned what that was What's last What's no week. cap? Because now I'm interested. No cap means I, it's, like, no capacity, like, no oh, limit. Like, okay. it can go, so no cap. Did anyone know Did that? that? Does anyone I know mean, that? No? Well, right, we just learned you. something yeah, yeah. today. Yeah. You'll Jeff see it soon, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, the youth, they define the future. You I know, agree. we can only learn from them. And I feel like you need to be humble enough to be able to go down to their level yes. and really listen to them. And I try to do that all the time. I spend time with 16, 13. There's no age for me. me so too. I feel for me, it has to always, everyone has an opinion and I try to respect it. And you know, I want to add too, like particularly in street culture, it, it definitely is all about the youth. And it's like, it's almost like if, if I start understanding every single thing that's happening, there's a problem like there should be street culture is all about the older people not understanding what the younger people younger, are doing. Yes. So there's two ways that you could look at that. You could be like, ah, forget that you they don't know what they're doing. I'm, I know what I'm doing, you know, like. But once you start thinking that you're screwed, you know. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's like forget social media. You really. Yeah, don't you don't it. know. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's impossible. <coughs> you have anything, John? I know you did. Oh, you my, my daughter's, I don't know, like two years ago says, hey, dad, you can't use the word legit. <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. She's like, because because it feels like you know, like an old man at the school disco kind of thing. You know? Yo, that that happened to me last month with the word dope. I said like, yo, that's really dope. They're like, can you stop using the word yeah, dope? Yeah, I was yeah, like, stop really? embarrassing me. I dad. can't use dope anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's open it up to the audience. All the way in the back. We're bringing you a mic. Hi, I'm Jeanette Beckman, and I just want to say on the other side of collaboration that I was really lucky to work on the Levi's Worldwide Campaign 2018, and it really, thank you. <laughs> It really was a collaboration, and they hired me because of what I do, and we talked, and we collaborated, and it was an amazing experience, and it's a brand that I've loved since I was a kid, so for me, it was like super important, and as an artist, you know, if you're working on something that you love, it's going to be better. Thank you. Any other questions for these guys? I think you should ask as many as you can. Uh, maybe I, w I have one question. Okay. Uh, so the question is uh, maybe more deep into the collaboration process for you. So uh, how do you approach the, the creative process when you already bonded with the 
tribe or uh, the the people you are working with, and uh, how how the process for you works uh, when you are creating the design. So what's what's the approach? Uh, the process for crea creativity it can be bucketed, I think, in like three stages. One of them is just being super open-minded and just collecting ideas. And then the next part of the process, part two. So like, let, if you're a musician, you're just walking al along and you're listening to loads of different types of music, you know, and experiencing culture. And then part two is just laying it down, right? So put it in a notepad, put, you know, lay down your first track or whatever. And it's a big, messy jumble. And then the third part of the process is ideas tend to cluster together and form hotspots. And then you see those big ideas just emerge almost like, like nature popping up, right? And those are the ones you then start to focus and hone on to. And then the next stage is just to prototype them, right? Just to make it and see and get that feedback loop and make it better. Yeah. It's, we have a similar process where I sort of equate it to like, um, you know, like a sculptor, when they start out, it's like just one block of marble, like a, like a square. And then they start chiseling in on it. And then at the final stages, like they're taking very fine sandpaper and they're doing all the final touches. So it's sort of similar. Like we are starting big and then drilling down to more and more fine details. And what I used to do as a mistake when I was younger was that I thought it was all about the big idea and like the big vision. And so we'd, we'd think of this amazing idea. We prototyped this amazing thing. And then I would forget about like the, the poly bag that it was you know, packaged in or like the box that it came in or, you know, like what store would get it? Like we wouldn't like finish it off. Like we would get it to the, sorry for the American football analogy, but we would, you know, get to the one yard line and it would be like, oh yeah, what, how come it didn't work out? Like, cause we didn't cross the finish line with it, you know? So like we will, we always now really focus on like big idea, but always get it all the way down to the finest details. For me, as a designer, um, uh, for me, it's always understanding e each other's expectations. Once we understand the expectations and the heritage, because I feel like it's all about balance. You need to respect the DNA of the brand. At the same time, you have your identity, and you need to find a sweet balance between both. And I feel that's the, that's the hardest part, and that's what mis people do mistakes in most of the times. But successful collaborations, come when you respect the balance. And once you nail down all the ideas you have, I, what we do is usually we also think big, like Jeff says. We come up with uh, crazy ideas, probably ideas that uh, sometimes would never be able to be budgeted and created. But you pull out a few ideas from those big ones, and you come up with a mistake that becomes actually a great collaboration. And I feel like you should never be afraid to make some new decisions. I feel like y there's a negative space, and then you start doing mistakes and mistakes and mistakes until you find something that's unique. Yeah. And uh, the quick hack is to get the nerdiest kids involved because they will take it to the nth degree, you know, where you know, old people are like, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. And they'll be like, yeah. yeah. Quick question. How important is social media in terms of you looking at collaborate? collaborating with your partners like the numbers is that outweighing the actual art and the design I'm curious I don't I don't care about the numbers but I am cognizant that social media is the way we're consuming so for ex I'll give you an example like when we when we finish a project and then we end up like creating the contents for it and the assets for it like a lot of photographers and, and videographers have this very grandiose vision of like, I want it to look amazing on a movie screen and a billboard. I'm like, guys, this has to look good on a three inch screen. And if I can't see what's happening on a three inch screen, it doesn't matter how good it looks on a billboard in Times Square, you know? So that's where I'm cognizant of like how people are consuming it, but how it does, I think, you know, Jonathan said it earlier, we put our blood, sweat and tears into it. And that's all we can do after that. However the reaction or the numbers is, it is what it is. Yeah, it's, it's not about numbers, it's about the quality. Yeah. For me too, I mean, I would agree to both of you. For me, it's more about the story. That's it. We got one more question, yeah. 
So uh, this is for Jeff. Uh, what do you think about uh, you know collaboration as a way of moving into a newer territory? So somewhere uh, where the culture is now up and coming, uh, places like India, where I'm from. What what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think it's great. It's a it's actually a two way street because to what you were saying, if you're from the region, in order for you to get exposure, it's helpful to do a collaboration with somebody outside of your region as well. And for me, it's the same thing. Even though I might have like a, a, a bigger brand and I'm from New York, if I have zero presence in India or Southeast Asia or any other region, the, a great entree into that is by doing a collaboration. That's a great reason to do one. Okay. We'll take one last question here, right here in the middle, and that's it. Hey guys, thanks for the talk, really inspiring. Um, quick question for anyone, uh, basically. When you find yourself in a creative slump and you just you can't make anything happen, how do you get yourself out of that? What is your inspiration? Where do you find that? It's a good one. Well, it happens to me quite often sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I go on holiday, you know? <laughs> or, yeah. or I play, uh, you know, I'm a Lego collector. I do Lego. So I feel like something that you don't do that has nothing work related or just spend time with your friends, you know, something really like basic. I feel like we live in such a fast consuming world with social media, collaborations, la latest drop. I feel this is like also social media, like we were saying, it's really tiring. You know, I feel like sometimes you just need to take a break. Just take a break, spend some time with the friends. That's what that's for me. I don't know what you guys uh, I mean. Who's ever had a good idea sitting at their desk, right? So the best thing is go for a walk and go for the most random walk that you can do, right? And bump into random people. No, seriously, because randomness, right? It's that unexpected that can trigger something. And it might not be the breakthrough idea, but it might trigger something that gets you to the breakthrough idea. So uh, I, almost, I, I almost, almost try and like plan myself every day right to do a random walk i'll go on to like i'll go onto the floor where all the accountants hang out and like so you just bump into somebody because that that stirring that shit up really helps yeah i think it's just trying to figure out how to get into the unexpected is, is what everyone's saying and i agree like just put yourself in front of a situation where it's not the norm for you and some other you know neuron in your brain is going to fire off I think, I think that's the key, right? What is above average? What's an ab what defines above average? Above average is defined as not average, right? Not thinking average, not behaving average. So go out and find, you know, and that's what collaborations is about. It's about finding, you know, if you hang out with people that are, are better than you, you know, uh, more creative, more intelligent, cooler, it's going to raise everybody's game. So go look for that. Go look for the unusual ones, the crazy ones, the ones that are not average, and that will raise your game. Thank you. Well, I'd like to say thank you to Jeff, thank you to Jonathan, thank you to Benjamin for having us today. Please make a note to try to go by their booth. Thank you, Sharifa. Thank, thank you. you. Sharifa. Also, Thanks, Contact High you, is having an event at 4 p.m. at the Contact High booth, so try to go by there as well. Thank you. All right.